Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, your election command center. We're going to be heavy on who gets to partner the two major candidates of the two major political parties. As the MPP and the NDC, as the conversation continues to rise on a daily basis on Dr. Ba Mahmoud Abamiya and John Mahama, naming their running mates ahead of election 2024. Now, it's quite clear uh, and how things are playing out, especially with the names that have popped up so far, and some of them have, have been talking already. Now, take a look at this. There earlier, there are some names that popped up and suggestions made as to who could be considered as running mate for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. You see Osechi Mensa Bomsu, he's currently the majority leader of this eighth parliament, member of parliament for the Swami constituency, one of the longest seven MPs in this eighth parliament. Dr. Matthew Pokupempe is the energy minister, Misha South member of parliament, heavily to, 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 to be the one to be considered. That is, if uh, you have Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya looking to the Ashanti region. And if you look at the performance of Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya in the just ended flag bearer race in his constituency, you can understand why he's in pole position amongst these others. And Dr. Yao Osei Duchum, Education Minister, also Bosumche Member of Parliament, and also in the Ashanti region. But the, the last person is Kennedy Ohenia Japong. And his name only came up after the running mate, that's the, the flag bearer ship race, and the, the very good showing that he put up during that race. And, and so the many who are saying that, look, if Dr. Mahmoud Obamia is going to be looking down south, which is the very obvious, because you have the two leading political parties having their flag bearers now from the north. So it goes without saying that if the criteria for the selection of running mate over the period is going to apply in this case, then you would be wrong to suggest that the two of them, that's Dr. Mahmoud Obamia and John Mahama, will be looking down south, right? And so then you have Kennedy Japan being in, in one of the major swing regions, the central region in this country as to whether that is going to be a major consideration for them. It is for the MPP to take that decision. But one of the four persons I just showed to you, that's the majority leader, Oseche Mensabonsu, he has been responding to this report of him being considered for the running mate position of Dr. Mahmoud Obamia. He said this in the yet to be aired interview with my colleague, Kemeni Amano on Hot Issues, but just, just a brief of that answer he gave to that question. Take a look. Do you have personal ambitions to be running mate for the NPP? The man knows me, he knows my competences, he knows my credentials. If he thinks that I'm the right person, it's his choice. Could but you, there, could you be a are, good running there many, mate? There are many others who also have... Uh, you could, know, could you be a good running mate? Could I be a yeah. good running mate? You want me to set my own question and provide my own no, marking I have scheme? Asked, I have asked you Provide my own marking scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to mark myself. It's for others to judge. I, I mean, it's for others to judge that, oh, James, I was, could be. But it's not for me to say that I will uh, be. But you have to believe in what you can do. I believe in my, I believe in my own competence. Yes, and you God believe in your own competence. I know what I can do, what I cannot do. So that's Oseche Mensa Bonsu there. He knows what he can do and what he cannot do. He says the man, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, knows his competence as an individual. So if he's going to consider, well, obviously, the jury is out there on this matter. As per what he said, that his competence is clear for, for Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya to also take a look at and, and consider. Well, if you look at the flip side of things with the NDC, John Mahama, flag bearer of the NDC, during the, the tour of the Building Ghana tour in the Bono East region, it was very clear that the timeline for the selection is 2024. Although some political analysts say that being in opposition and wanting to come to power, he should make the ticket, the complete ticket, quite clear early enough. But that's the timeline of the party, 2024. This is what he said on that tour. Take a look. 
Ni ama kana se. Senya ama mresti da hono. Eh eh ya manyo kono so e kwan e da ho a ye di yi ye nipa a jina bi bi a ye di nipa no beto. Eh ye presidential candidate and a national executive and a council of elders. Ye na en ye di eti bom na ye yi nipa ye friend a running mate. Na sa ju me die no enya afi ni e be no afi e ba e na e be yi sa ni pa no enti emre no dru ho a mo de mo ko so mbo mpa ye na mo ko so mbo mpa ye ni ese nya bi na si hene enti well, so that's John Muhammad's response, that continue to pray that it's going to happen. 2024 is given a timeline to that announcement of who is going to partner him. But earlier when we spoke to the chair of the NDC, Johnson and Nketia, he did not give an absolute answer, declined to give any specifics as to exactly what the considerations will be for the, the running mate choice of John Muhammad. Take a look. Have names come up I'm saying for that. the vice have presidential you candidate? Have you seen our, our, our party constitution? Absolutely. Before? And, you know, John Ramani Mahama is supposed to make the choice in conjunction mm -hmm. with the Council mm -hmm. of Elders. What mm -hmm. I'm asking you now, Do you have, have some anywhere? names come up yet? Uh -huh. And so, is it in the constitution that I am the one they will bring names to, so the names will come up to me and I'll make a choice? No, you I, say I, John Dramani, no, I haven't said oh, you are making the choice. So where are you talking about names no, Chema, coming out? Chairman, hear me out. <laughs> Chairman, hear me out. Yes. I haven't said that yes. you are going to make the choice. Yes. What I'm asking is, what are the discussions around a vice presidential candidate for There is the no discussion NDC? as far as I'm aware now. Okay. What, what would the strategy be uh, for the NDC in, in making a choice? choice of uh, a vice presidential candidate. You may wish to talk to our flag bearer because you are aware, Thank you for you are aware of the procedure. It Thank is you the for flag bearer coming. who makes the choice and then we propose the choice for our consideration. The flag bearer doesn't make two choices, three choices or five names for consideration. He presents a name to the National Executive Committee for consideration. If, should we feel for one reason or the other dissatisfied? we don't have the right to go and make another choice. So if people are going around saying that these names have come for consideration, these names have come for, it's absolutely not the case at all. On, on the only person who can answer that question whether names have come out will be President Jokamani Mahama because it is not our responsibility to receive any names, whether it's short list or long list. So, even though it says there's, there's no discussion going on, it gives exactly the process. That's Johnson and Chidun Ketia in that interview with my colleague, Kevin Emmanuel earlier, giving the exact process that this decision will go through and eventually be announced in 2024. Jamama was quite clear on that, but didn't give the specific months that this um, announcement is going to be made. But that interview with Oseche Mesa Bonsu, the full complement of that interview is going to be on Sunday at 2 p.m., Hot Issues on TV3, so make a date. But this, with, with, with the names of uh, some of the persons who have also come up as possible choices, this is just the first list of many names. It's more like a fishing expedition for, for the considerations for John Mahmoud's running mate. But take a look. And these have been published in, in, on various, in various forms and shapes. Professor Nana Jinopoku Ajiman, she's running mate, or she was running mate for 2016, 2020. If uh, many people have asked that she be maintained, she turned 72 yesterday. Um, she's a choice that the people in the central region, for instance, are rooting for and one of the swing regions for that matter. Julius Debra, the former chief of staff of John Mahama as president, he has come out to <clears throat> issue the statement indicating that there hasn't been any approach of a sort. 
Dr. George Ekufo Dampari, and there's a reason why is this, uh, the IGP's name is there, because if you recall, when this leaked tape came out, one of the suggestions of the two people, two voices on that leaked tape with Daniel Bugri Nabu was that John Mahama is, he, they are saying that they have even heard that your mama is considering Dr. George Okufu Dampai for the running mate position. So that's why he finds himself on this list, based on that details of the leaked audio tape. We still are asking questions of the next phase of that probe. Parliament is on it. Dr. Sam Jonah, his name has also come up a number of times in also a few other conversations of uh, points of consideration. Kwame Wadako is former CEO of uh, BOST and then also at a point, the Tamar Refinery. Um, he was then appointed by John Mahama. Um, also, there was a telegraphic report that attributes to the fact that John Mahama says whoever is going to be his running mate is someone who has served in his government before. That doesn't mean in any shape or form that that is going to be the only form of consideration. You heard what Isidun Ketia chairman Isidun Ketia said. Alex Mode, his name came out at a point um, sometime in 2016 and 2020. But as to whether he is also being a main consideration for this point, is also another issue to talk about. Dr. Valerie Esther Sawyer was the Deputy Chief of Staff at the point, an advisor, close advisor to the, the flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama. Her name came up at a point as well, but then again, it still boils down to who the party's specific choice will be on this matter. But these are names. There's just, just a first phase of many people that have just come up. By 2024, we will get to know the full complement of the ticket of these two uh, main contenders going into election 2024 here on your election command center. We, we keep an eye on how things are playing out. And in fact, there's a statement that has been attributed to the general secretary of the NDC, Fifi Kwete, which we'll get to shortly, um, that there are a number of considerations, including the fact that the choice would be some, somebody from the swing regions of, of this country. And we're talking about, if you're talking about swing regions, you know that the swing regions bear the considerations at least based on our own analysis here in this country. We know about the central region, you know, the greater Accra region, Bono and Hafo regions, western region. So if you could talk talks about the swing regions, it's going to be one of the considerations for the choice of the running mate. Plus the fact that the person will certainly be a female, a woman or a lady. So that's Fifi Quetes Pointes as attributed to him. But is that going to be the major, major issues to take into consideration? Professor Edu Samuel Edu Jemfi is a senior lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology uh, Department of Political Science and History. He's joining us on Zoom. Thank you, Prof, uh, for your time here on Ghana tonight and for the patience to actually readjust and get the connection right. Now, it's clear, Professor Jemfi, that the two persons are going to make their choice, all things being equal, down south, because you have John Mahama and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia from the north. But that said, will that be one of the major issues, apart from looking down south, that you, from the political scientist perspective, is going to be looking at, Prof? Hello, Prof. If you can unmute, yes, for us. Exactly the case, my brother. They, they would be looking down south, uh, fundamentally also with other uh, parameters in place, because they wouldn't want to just pick somebody from uh, the southern region. They would rather be interested in also looking at, first of all, that particular running mate who will add to their numbers and which part of the South are we looking at? So we are necessarily not looking at South in the sense of proper South, but 
in the sense of uh, i.e. areas beyond the northern and the upper regions, right? Up to uh, maybe in the case of the MPD, not even the central region, because you need to look at historically the three elections, Nandan Kufado, Kalideta Kufado went into, he had a lot of support from Asante, even when he lost two of those elections. He had a lot of support from Asante. So if you have somebody from the northern and upper regions, that individual then was supposed to work hard to rake in the votes from those angles. And so you would want to ask yourself, who is the right candidate where is he coming from? Which region specifically is he coming from? And how much in terms of quantities, in terms of numbers, would that region add? These have been the pattern, I believe, for the MPP historically. They are interested, they've always been interested in having that Northern Alliance, not necessarily because of Dankwa Buzia, Dumbo tradition, whatever the case is. In, in our contemporary history, at least since the uh, uh, coming together of the group uh, in the 1990s, a reformation and recalibration of the group, now the MPP, the party has had different candidates and they've tried to have different forms of alliances. And what has really worked if you look at it historically, has been, in this case, uh, former President Kofo and the late Ali Mahama, and then uh, President Akufuado and Mahmoud Baumia. The dynamic was so clear. It took the efforts of the candidates themselves. It also took the efforts of the running mates. And so if the running mates are not going to add to the fortunes of the lead candidate or the flag bearer, he or she should be jettisoned or need not be considered at all. Because it's all about numbers, adding, adding up to victory. Having said that, I think that in the case of the MPP, they've already showed that they are looking toward uh, Asante. Several of the conversations which, I mean, we've had over the period suggest that. It is not surprising to me that, the, I mean, uh, he will consider somebody from a, a Asante region. The reason is quite obvious. Asante region has persistently supported the MPP. Not only that, they gave their massive support to candidate Akufuado. And that, that's something that is very critical, so that it is not a question about ethnic, ethnicity, ethnic voting and all that. That that narrative must be jettisoned within the current scheme of things. The reality of the matter is that Asante, as a region, has contributed massively to the growth of the MPP and massively to their fortunes in terms of electoral fortunes and bringing them victory from time to time. All right. In fact, even when they've lost elections, they made the matter and remain competitive, waiting for the next four years or the next election to come. I see. But, I it, but that it, it in, in that point that you, you make mm -hmm. about the fact that the economy and, and Dr. Baumia's personality and so on is going to be looking more to Ashanti based on your own reading. As an economist, and then also how he was presented, it's quite clear the state of affairs and, and how the state of the economy in itself is looking is not doing him any good because of some of the things he said in the past, right? And the economy is going to be a major issue going into this particular election. Should that be one of the major considerations as um, in, in, that's in Dr. Baumia choosing a candidate for that matter? The fact that the goodwill and the trust that the public had for him as an economist has obviously waned off because of the current state of the economy that we find ourselves in. If he just is just interested in picking a politician from amongst the MPP or one of the parliamentarians or one of the ministers, fine, that would be his choice. 
but he needs to tread cautiously to not bring someone who has that kind of ego or pride that is going to end up creating an internal conflict between himself. I mean, I mean, clash of personalities. That's what I'm trying to say. Because as a flag bearer, you are not going to be subservient to your running mate. And your running mate is not, I mean, this is not to say that you are going to be a, a dictator within the scheme of things. But your running mate should be someone you could bounce off ideas with, have a conversation with, and someone who respects your leadership. Not someone who, from the word go, is interested in becoming a president and just waiting for the day you be kicked off from the race for him to take over. It's a very sensitive point I'm trying to arrive at, my brother. So he's, he should be interested in that, in picking someone who literally believes in him and believes in his leadership, not joining him for his own political experience or her own political experience. I mean, to satisfy his or her own, her own whim and caprice. There is the need to have that candidate, that running mate, who has a higher degree of loyalty and would be committed, uh, possibly will not come in with a certain ego that will rob off them uh, in a way that will even uh, cause some negative triggers and responses from the populace. Already, the government has not done so well. So you need that candidate from within, but it's also an outsider, very interesting, who has some technocrat, not want to necessarily suggest that that person is an economist, but someone who could speak to them. I mean, has some wisdom, deep sense of knowledge, and and would be able to articulate the issues to your campaign. Certainly someone who, coming from as a, as a region, would equally be able to mobilize and mobilize the forces within the region to mm -hmm. hope at least the base to allow them to, to remain significant in the 2024 election. Right. Uh, and, uh, and Puff, uh, while I ask you to kindly reposition, and this is going to be a, a quick one before we go, the, for the NDC as well, Joe Mahama has been very clear in his words. 2024 is a timeline. We didn't give specific day or month that that announcement is going to be made. But already we've seen other names come up aside from Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajiman. Your take on this. I'm surprised that at this time of the day, uh, the NDC would not rather see, if you like, wisdom in this woman going as a running mate with uh, uh, former President Mahama. He creates a right balance, I believe. In fact, the other elections was not an eight year. I believe she did the best she could. If there are areas to arm her, they have a lot of experts, a lot of political communicators and all that. The woman herself is elevated. She is, she, her articulation and knowledge and, and expertise coming to the, I mean, what she comes to the table with is very significant. I dare say that central region in terms of vote has left in allegiance, but we know that the former president was from the central region. We know that among other things, the central region has contributed to the votes of the NP NDC significantly. But for me, she was not a wrong choice at all. And today she's still not a wrong choice. I mean, in my thinking, in my contemplation, I think she stands the chance of bringing an interesting twist to the debate and the discussions in contemporary times. And she must be given the necessary support to play her role, to step up, right. to push candidate Mahama, possibly into victory. That right. is something, look, I mean, be quick to forget. Yes, we want to go to the central region to pick a different person or go to the western region and pick a different person 
or go to the voter region and pick a different person. For me, that will be experimentation. Okay. At this time of the day. Right. Interesting. Uh, Professor Samuel Edujefi, thank you very much for your thoughts on this, but it's still left with the party. And uh, with all of these pointers and experimentation that you talk about, whatever is good for them will be what they will consider eventually. But I do appreciate your thoughts on this. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. But there's something happening with the PRC because they, they've announced a tariff adjustment for uh, the fourth quarter with electricity tariff going down. But there's something happening with water tariffs as well, which we're going to be telling you shortly. But that's not too good news. Um, but earlier, this was the PRC's uh, publication specifically indicating the exact details um, as was put out there today. And they said 1.52% reduction um, in electricity tariffs as was announced earlier today. There are a number of factors that they took into consideration, uh, which we're going to be putting on the screen shortly, uh, that influenced this 1.52% reduction in the electricity tariffs, the CD dollar relationship, inflation rate, the price of natural gas, and then also they took into consideration as well, what you see there, the energy mix and uh, the matters arising in there. And then we will take you down memory lane to show you how much we've seen in terms of the increase in the tariffs over the period from September last year to this point. And that's why there's been reactions from the consumers of electricity, how significant this 1.52% reduction in electricity tariffs will be on the pockets of the people. Somebody with the periodist is going to be joining us shortly, but take a look at this. Over the period from September right down to this point, we have seen an almost 80% increase in electricity tariffs. September 2022, we saw a 27% increase in electricity tariffs, 22% for water. February 2023, 29.96% electricity tariffs, 8.3% for water. Then in June, we saw 18.3% increase in electricity tariffs. But for the water tariffs in, in June, the PRC indicated that there was going to be different marginal increases for different brackets of consumers of water. So there was no specific increase. That's what you see that place being blank. For that period as well, and we've gone straight to September, where you see 1.52 reduction in electricity tariffs, and then also you see the 0.3% increase in water tariffs. So if you add all of that, we're seeing almost 80% increase in electricity tariffs from September last year, 2022, to this point. Let's get an understanding of what has been playing out with the PRLC over the period. Now, Dr. Eric Kofi Obute is the Director of Research and Corporate Affairs at the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission. He's joining us on, on Zoom. Thank you so much for your time here on Ghana tonight. This 1.52% reduction in electricity tariffs, as we've seen in your publication. I mean, for the consumer who's watching us right now, how does it translate into monetary terms how does it impact on our pockets are we going to be paying lesser and, and by how much well um what's going to happen is that if previously you were paying about um, 200 cities for your consumption then at this point in time maybe you do a reduction of 1.52 percent now that 1.52 percent it depends on the class in which you are some of the classes, the rates have gone down by about two, per two pesos. Some have gone down by about three pesos. So it all depends on the class in which you are and the consumption. You must have a control on your own consumption. And that's the only way you can make sure that you benefit out of this reduction. I see, but I, I just wanted to find out the significance of this 1.52% reduction because, as I've just shown, the almost 80% increase in electricity tariffs over the last one year, uh, 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 Dr. Obutek? Well, um, as I keep on saying every time, these parameters which we use are not the ones which are in the control of any of the utility service providers or under the control of the PURC. 
So we look at the four factors, which are the generation mix. We look at the inflation. We look at exchange rate. We look at the fuel price. Once those prices begin to go down south, that means decline, obviously to impact positively on the tariff as well. So the tariff reduction that we've seen so far is just because those parameters which I mentioned earlier on have also started going downward. So um, as long as we see a downward trend, it will impact positively on the tariff as we go forward into the future. Those factors you mentioned, we're going to put that on the screen shortly. And, and so let's get a specific understanding. What specific factors led to this reduction of 1.52 that we are seeing so that we, we, we can find out if that trend is going to continue? Prof. Well, the specific factors are basically the generation mix between the hydro and the thermal. You know, previously in the third quarter, for instance, we're using hydro generation of about 29%. Now we are using hydro has been moved up to about 31.9%. So that's approximately 32% of hydro. And we are generating 68% from thermal. Now, if you take the uh, inflation, inflation has also seen a downward trend by about 3.6%. Inflation has gone down by about 3.6%. If we take the fuel prices, fuel prices have gone down by about 5.9%. And if you take the exchange rate, exchange rate has also declined marginally, but it's in a positive range of 3.7%. So if you put all these together, that is what is impacting the tariff. Is this the downward trend in these factors that you have just mentioned going to continue so that consumers at least will have some sense of assurance that this reduction in electricity tariffs will continue at least for a period as we have seen this continuous increases over the last one year? Well, it all depends on the four factors again and the, the direction in which these four factors actually go. If into the future, let's say we see a continuous downward trend of inflation, obviously it will impact positively on the tariff. If we continue to see the exchange rate stabilize against the dollar, um, if you see the CD strengthening or appreciating against the dollar, and we see also that the, how the fuel prices are also actually dipping further, this would have a positive impact on the tariff. So into the future, we only pray that these factors that I mentioned will keep on showing a positive sign. So at least it will impact positively on the tariff. Okay. Dr. Eric Kofiobute, I thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight and then also the clarification to what's happening. So even though the electricity tariffs have gone out down by 1.52%, water tariffs have gone up by 0.3%. Now, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Eric Kofiobute, Director of Research and Corporate Affairs, Public Utilities Regulatory Commission. This is Ghana tonight. Now, we are uh, also going to be recalling some of the, the, the debates that's especially characterized this whole 2024 budget, which bothers on a number of things that we've talked about. But coming up next, right after this quick break, we're live in the Quanta in the OT region where tension remains high while the once and the Mekte town has become a ghost town following the ethnic clashes that claimed at least eight lives. A man got in a city bar, is on the ground. He is in, in Quanta South. He's gonna be joining us live in this care few hours after this quick break. Stay with us. Gentlemen.